Good evening everyone, uh, welcome back to Finance Lingo. Uh, in this video, I'll be touching on this stock uh, on analysis on this uh, Centurion business in the Singapore stock market. Alright, let's start with disclaimer. This presentation is provided to you for general information only and does not constitute a recommendation and offer a solicitation to subscribe for, purchase or sell the investment product mentioned herein. Alright, so uh, let's begin. So we are, we are firstly, we are looking at this stock Centurion. Just let me hide. Okay, so this stock is presently today trading at the price of 3 65 to 375 range so personally i think that this share price will hold between this two price range for the next two three or two or three days perhaps so um as we as a start let's look at the fundamental of this uh, so what you guys need to do just go to right click and go to start analytics i prepared beforehand so um okay so here we are this is the start analytics of this centurion stocks so uh first of all we are okay this stocks uh the past 12 month dividend history you are looking at 5% dividend yield um, the payout is very insignificant I'll show it to you the PE ratio here we are looking at 8 times so that means to say the company's present earnings relative to the share price is about 8 times so this con is considered very attractive the price to book value is very low so uh, we have a lot of margin of safety over here low price to book and low PE ratios with a healthy profit margin alright so now let's look at the past 5 years of the financial statement so these companies uh, have been doing very well. The sales have been increasing very rapidly over the past five years. So the revenue from 2011 was 30 million and it from two in the year 2015, the revenue uh, reached a uh, 104 million dollars revenue. Okay, all, all in all, you can see the net profit is rising steadily. Okay, with the increase in revenue. So um, apart from that, uh, in the year 2011, they did report a loss, but in the year 2012 and to all the way to 2015, this company started to make a lot of profit. So apart from that, there's one very catching thing here. The company cash on hand from 38 billion has significantly rose to 138 million in the year 2015. But uh, before that, I just need to jump one point first. Let's come back to the recent quarters. Recent quarters, they have 1116 million cash on hand. So a uh, pretty significant cash on hand they are holding. So a lot of um, expansion opportunities available, right? So now let's look, move forward, go back to annual, uh, annual statements. The accounting book value have been increasing over the past five years. Alright, so this is a very beautiful increase. Other than that, uh, there's one some slowdown over here, but uh, overall it's still very beautiful increase in the accounting book value. The dividends the company paid out to the shareholders have been increasing over the years and they have been very generous. But all in all, although being generous, they all, I would say that in some way they are still stingy. But what you can see here, they are only paying up 25% of the net profit earnings that they make. Okay, of course, they are keep some cash for contingency plans <laughs> here they are giving maybe 10 percent or even less okay in the year this this financial year they actually give out about 10 percent of the net profit okay in the recent years 2015 they cut generous uh, give up 15 cents so all right so nonetheless uh the financial year that they are coming uh is coming to an end uh they are probably preparing the financial statements so what you can see in the last nine months of this company they are making good profit so i do expect a good dividends decent dividends at least uh, from this company or probably at least to hold the same dividend rate as what they have last year so um, okay so apart from that they are, have a lot of cash on hand uh, do, nonetheless while well, the company have been growing I do notice that the debt they take on is pretty large and uh, well of course some investor may say hey the total debt ratio debt to equity ratio is pretty high you know uh, well uh, I do think that there is a valid reason to that I'll address that later on First, uh, we do can we can see that the the company is actually reducing their debt. Uh, firstly, I uh the bond one of the bond actually matured early, they redeem early and they pay back all the shareholders. So um, it could be that they do not want to pay such high interest to the share the, the bondholders. So they did have a they, there is a significant decrease in the debt. So why the company with such a high debt deserve a rating? So firstly, we are looking that they have have a very big fat gross margin. So what you can see here is that the gross profit margin here from the revenue is about 60 percent. That is to say, for every dollar that we receive, they actually make 60 cents. So minus of the salary net of net, they are still have a, have a net profit margin of 30 over close to 30 percent. Uh, right goes to the shareholders. So this is a very attractive company. So it makes sense that this company extend more borrowings from the bank because uh, for every five percent or maybe 10 percent of the loans that they take, they actually have still have a 18% for themselves so all in all the bank will love to keep lending them money because this company is very profitable uh, in the way they manage 
I'm not certain how they manage, but nonetheless, this is very profitable. So, okay, this is a fundamental analysis to that. Uh, of course, the Riconia have a 16 bullish and 3 bearish. I do not quite agree with that so many bearish bull, but nonetheless, or over in the medium term, medium and long term, we are, I did have a strong recommend, I mean, strong point of viewpoint that this is a very bullish stock going forward for this year. So, right, this is a fundamental analysis. Uh, what business does they do? Okay, this company actually engage in the uh, student accommodation, workers accommodation. So those uh, hardworking Bangladesh that work for Singapore that should provide accommodation to them as well as student accommodation to the RMIT and uh, several places uh, and overseas. So, uh, okay, so this this is uh, this business actually get more involved with accommodation point of, uh, basis. Okay, so next we come to the uh, recent quarterly uh, quarterly uh, reports. Uh, the company have been making pretty decent uh, revenue over the past three uh, past nine months. Uh, I don't see any spike in it and and um, revenue, but nonetheless they did uh, report a very good profit. So I still expect a dividends cut going forward. So okay, this is a fundamental analysis. Now we take a look at this charts. This graph. Uh, this sorry, this candlestick analysis. This is the weekly candlesticks of Centurion uh, for the past three years. Okay, the C stock have been trading in the 70 over cents range in the year 2014. So presently, it's only trading at 30 over cents. It's literally about 50% discount. So uh, will it go down further or will we go up further? I do not see any likelihood that you go down further. So this is the candlesticks. Uh, what price range I'm looking at? Firstly, I'm looking at this price range. Of first uh, around this region here so there is a two reversal candle here I believe that this and uh, some red bearish candles here I believe that this stock will soon trade the range of 40 between 41 to 45 range pretty soon maybe in a few months time all right um, apart from that um, the six next resistance level I'm looking at will be around here this region here so about 51 cents is a the share price will start to tank again so because there was a lot of uh, red soldiers very solid red soldiers here and these powerful soldiers red soldiers stopping the share price from going up so all in all uh, i do believe that this stock is very likely to reach this two price range going forward it may take about a year or half a year i do not know but nonetheless with the strong fundamentals i have strong confidence that this stock probably will apart from that with the strong dividends yeah i will mind keeping this stock okay this is a technical analysis. Apart from that, you can see that there's a lot of bear, bearish candles over here. When when it happens, it goes all the way. Do not catch this kind of falling knife. This is very dangerous. But overall, nonetheless, we can see a very strong bullish candlestick, green candles, solid candles forming up over here. And of course, I do can uh, attribute maybe ten or twenty thousand shares or thirty thousand shares of this stock bullish. But nonetheless, I do see a definite competitor trying to snatch the shares away from me. So uh, there's a lot of bullish shares. I still see that there's a lot of potential going up forwards. Alright, so uh, I'm not looking at maybe taking profit of 42 or 43. I'm looking at taking profit in the 50 cents or even 48 or 49 range. Uh, one year down the time or any time if it happened earlier, that would be bonus. So this is the candlestick analysis. Uh, apart from that, I will highlight to you the market depth information. Okay, there's the market depth information. Um, okay, um, for this. Um, 8th of February so you can see here that the buyer volume all queuing up to buy hoping that will catch some durians but I don't think there's likelihood so um, I personally I did get get about 20,000 worth 20,000 shares so it's about 6,000 worth uh, at a range of 0.355 <coughs> I, I may get even more subsequently uh, maybe 365 or 375 anything below 40 cents to me I think it looks very attractive I do not see a need to actually queue if you are looking for long term, uh, of course you try to catch some durance or hope pick some durance. Of course you can try to kill, but uh, I would recommend it. I would um, and good decent entry price maybe a point three seven or three seven five looks decent. All right, so you can see that the buyer demand is pretty strong over here, and the seller supply is very little. So it's a matter of time the share price. It's a matter of time the share price will really go up. So this is the market there. So uh, next we are going to go on to the uh, annual reports and the directors. So let me show you. Okay, just hold on a moment. Okay. So firstly, uh, you guys can uh, go to the company websites, right? So uh, and download the annual reports from here. 
Okay, you can just click here and download the report. Nonetheless, I've downloaded it in advance. Firstly, I'm just going to highlight to you guys um, who are the board of management. Okay, so first we are going to page four of the annual reports. The board of management, the chairman is Mr. Wong Kok Ho. Okay, I've copied and pasted over here. And the uh, chair CEO is Mr. Kong Chi Ming. Kong Chi Ming. Okay, I've copied and pasted over here. Similarly, let's go down to page eight. All right, so this is the board of directors. So now let's take a look uh, who are the rest of the people. So we have copy and paste Mr. Wong Kok Ho. Okay, now let's go on. Uh, Mr. Lo Kim Kang David is the non-executive director. Next, uh, Mr. Hang Seng Juan is also the non-executive director. Uh, okay, next we have Mr. Giang Heng Ming, who is a lead independent director, followed by Chan Juan Mohan, son of Ridom, okay, who is the non executive independent director. Going forward now, uh, next we have Mr. Kong Chi Ming, uh, I don't think it's significant on that, I'll skip this. And Mr. Teo, I like to highlight this Mr. Kelvin Teo, where is you? Where are you, Kelvin Teo? Okay. Mr. Kelvin Teo Peng Kwan, Chief Operating Officer. Okay, so the rest are not that concerned because I've screened through them. Okay, so here we are. We got all the names of these in individuals. Of course, there's one more unique person I'll highlight to you guys here. I'll explain to you later on. So on when you scroll down to page 144, you guys can obtain the shareholding statistics of this company. Page 144, right? Page 144. In the year two, uh, 31st of March 2016, this is the shareholding statistics. But nonetheless, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Okay, so here we are. It's the sharing statistics. Uh, okay, it looks a lot of numbers, but uh, you guys can read through this point one to point nine. Uh, it's very lengthy. I'm just going to do a quick summary. I'll do the print screen and summaries for you guys in advance. So here we are. We are at the sharing statistics of Centurion. Okay. So I'm just going to bring it side by side. Okay, so you guys can see here, just let me resize this. Okay, so what we have here is reference to point number two. Okay, this company, point number two over here. Okay, 78 million and uh, 275 million and 78 millions of these shares kept at DB Domains and UOB KM respectively. Uh, owned by this company, Centurion Properties, who is a subsidiary. So apart from this, uh, this one, 50% uh, of this company is owned by Mr. Lo King Tang David and um, another 50% owned by Han Seng Juan. Okay, then going to point number seven, point number seven over here, Mr. Teo Peng Kwan, blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, he owned actually 56 million shares of this company kept at DBS Nominees. Okay, and then he has another some small amount kept at UV. I'll, I'll ignore this figure as for, as for now because it's less significant. So when you divide by total shareholdings of 56 million divided by 748 million to total shareholdings, Mr. Teo Peng Kwan actually owns 7.5% of this entire company. Next, we come to the interesting point at this number, notes number five. Uh, that, you can uh, read, do it through here. 7.2 million shares is held by his spouse, uh, Kang Li Chang. Uh, so this, uh, Kang Li Chang, uh, Susanna actually uh, owns uh, 7.2 million shares, which are approximately 1% shareholdings of this entire company. So the wife is also on board as a shareholder. So this is very interesting. Uh, and I like this kind of structures because uh, a husband that loves a wife loves to give this kind of shares. All right. So uh, none the, so when you look at the shareholding statistics, uh, when we summarize earlier, I actually summarize that. Uh, let me do it. Okay. So um, the chief executive officer and the chairman actually doesn't hold much shares or maybe none. I do not know. So uh, apart from the rest, non-executive directors, Mr. Lo and Mr. Han actually own 23.5 uh, uh, each of them in this company. So Susanna, the wife of Mr. Han Seng Juan, actually owns about 1%. And the chief operating officers actually own 7.5% of this company. This is the number I derived, it's not exact, but no, it gives me a good gauge, a rough approximate. So as for the other two directors, Mr. 
uh, Gan Hyang Ming and Mr. Chandra. Okay, uh, it's not mentioned here that they own any of the shares as well. Maybe it's faction. Uh, maybe they enter this company late, uh, later in the in their life. Uh, so. so all in all, this few person here would own direct ownership is very significant, and the wife is on board as well. Sorry, the wife. All right, the wife is on board as well. So this is shouting statistics of this company. So next we go on to the dividends. So let's mi minimize this. So dividends. This is the dividends history of this centurion. You guys can go to SGX website, company information, corporate action to look for this dividend history. So it's a very lengthy dividends. They have company have paid out a lot of dividends over the past several years. Of course, in the year 20 uh, recently they have given up more. But nonetheless, I'm gonna I will actually summarize for you guys as well. So let's take a look. Okay. So here we are, this is the dividend history of the company. So I'm just going to enlarge this thing. Okay, so here we are, uh, this is the dividend history of this centurion. So what we can see here in the year 2012, the company gave out 3.3 cents. In the year financial year 1212, 8.4 cents. Financial year 13, they give up 0.6 cents. Financial year 14, they give up 1.5 cents. And financial year 15, they actually give up 1.5 cents. So financial year one six, how much are they giving? I do not know. They have given up 0 0.01 cents at, uh, in September last year. So they may give up 0.5 as of soon, but uh, they may even give more. I do not know, maybe even less. But nonetheless, since the wife is on board, I believe they can at least maintain the same real dividends and more dividends forward if the business do well. As, part, as far as I can see, the company have been generous, so shareholders can continue to look forward to dividends if you buy a holy shares. So even you, if you want to buy and trade the shares, I think these shares definitely deserve some trading. Uh, but as for now, as what we showed earlier, the volume isn't that much. So it's a much more of an uh, investor game rather than a trader game. So there's no more volume for the trade, not much volume. So the more any trader that come in is really going to drive the price up significantly. And there's a lot of bull candles uh, cited earlier. So this is the dividend history. So all in all, good dividends, good technical, good fundamentals, good corporate structures, companies on board, the wife is on board. Uh, I think that this is a pretty good company. Uh, nonetheless, I'm not recommending you to buy, but I think that I, uh, this is a good company. Uh, personally, I do have some shareholdings on this company I bought recently at the range of 0 0.3355. 3, As and when I have more cash holding, I may load up anything below 40 cents is attractive to me. Uh, I may just load up, I may not hesitate. Uh, so nonetheless, um, as far as I know, I, I declare to you guys, I have 20,000 shares on this company as, so, as of today's date. Okay, uh, I may even load more, but my threshold is reaching soon. Uh, I may just add on another batch and that's it. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this analysis. Uh, so if you guys want to invest or in any Singapore shares or, or foreign shares, do drop me an email at rollandpaybk at philip.com.sg or give a call to my office number at 6532 Alright, this is Roland here and I'm uh, signing off. That's all for today. Uh, good night.